Hello and welcome to this emergency edition of The Swim Brief. That's right, I've brought you all here because there was massive news in the world of swim coaching yesterday. Um, a lot of you probably read it on uh, Swim Swam or you know, if you're over the age of 65, you might have read it on that other swimming website. Um, but Terry Ganley of Minnesota has retired. And all right, that was a little bit of a prank, but listen, I, I do think I do want to mention her off the top. She she had the poor luck of announcing her retirement um, just like an hour or so before uh, news broke that uh, Eddie Reese was retiring and uh, she's had a pretty incredible career. It's one uh, worth visiting and, and admiring and um, it's been a real tra trailblazer up at Minnesota. Um, and, uh, it's, um, it's probably, uh, I mean, I wish her well, uh, it's tough to see her go because, um, you know, I think personally, I, I just get a little bit concerned, um, not, not on an individual level, but on a group level that we have this generation of, um, women who've contributed so much to coaching that are moving on. And, um, I worry that, uh, that uh, we something has gone wrong systematically to where we're we're not we're not moving the same kind of coaching talent up through the ranks. But anyway, um, I, you didn't come in here. Uh, you, you probably clicked on the title because it's Eddie Reese emergency podcast. So let's get to talking about Eddie Reese retiring. Um, I actually wrote a blog post four years ago that was uh, titled uh, "Please Retire." Eddie, it was uh, tongue in cheek. Although, you know, like all things on social media, um, there were some angry people who immediately read it and thought that I was calling for Eddie Reese to retire um, and got very upset about it. Um, this is one of the reasons why I don't interact with people on social media anymore. Um, <laughs> when I post podcasts or post blogs or anything of that nature, it's just um, uh, we have a, we have a system on social media that doesn't really provide for good conversations about this kind of stuff, the kind of conversations you might have uh, with a person normally. So um, I'm gonna rehash some of the points of that because I think that, uh, you know, w uh, once I got my tongue out of my cheek, there there is some um, really good contextual stuff here that I think is important for us to reflect on as we think about Eddie Reese retiring. One thing that um, just really struck me is uh, Eddie's 79 years old, um, and one thing I've heard him talk about is w w his career in swimming spans the introduction of interval training until where we are now, right? Um, for those of you listening <laughs> who I just went like, huh? Okay, there was a point in, in swimming where there was no interval training. Like you, 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 you did not get in the water and swim 20 50s on 50 or whatever. Like you sort of like got in and you swam for a certain amount of time, okay? Uh, sorry, you just you know swam a certain distance, more like it. Um, and then you got out. Of course, no goggles, so you also had that as a limiting factor. But um, just think about like all the debates we're having, uh, the religious debates about what to include in practice now and um, how revolutionary it was at one point that you just, you know, swim a certain distance and then repeat it on a certain interval. That, um, that's how long Eddie's been in the game. And, uh, and yet throughout all that time, um, obviously some of that interval stuff was when he was a swimmer, but um, since, since he became a coach, he's been at the top of it. And you don't, you don't do that without um, innovating and changing and learning throughout. Um, I think that's one thing that people really admire about him is, uh, and I'll t talk a little bit more about that later too, because I think, you know, his age is worth bringing up in the context of what he's accomplished. Um, but he has always been somebody who I think, you know, what I admire most uh, about him and I'll try not to make this whole thing 
um, you know, sound like a eulogy because he's not dead. <laughs> he's still going to be coaching. And uh, I think anybody that listens to this doesn't uh, knows that I'm not into sort of God worship of uh, of other coaches. But I, I one thing that I think is really good, and I, I just talked about this with um, Jamie Fowler on a podcast. Jamie had him pretty recently on a on a, on the uh, Poolside Pass podcast, and um, he's always been a master of taking complex stuff and and making communicating it in a really simple way. So you know, like something that your average coach would take, you know several minutes to explain and the swimmer sort of staring off into the distance and um you know eyes glaze over all that stuff he could boil it into uh, a one sentence you know and just communicate it to people um <clears throat> and you can instantly see how that would be really effective in coaching to just be able to you know uh, take really high level concepts and simplify them for people so that they could take them and run with them right away um, it's something I'm always thinking about, uh, especially when I'm doing stuff with positive psychology. Uh, you know, like, how do I take something that's been written by a researcher and is in dry sort of uh, scientific language and not really been tested out in the field, and how do I put it into the field, and how do I put it in the field where anyone can pick it up and run with it? And I think um, in the world of, of coaching swimming, he's absolute master at that. I think he... He, he may not even know it, but he was a, a positive psychology master. Talked about this on another podcast. Um, you know, he had started a tradition, or actually the swimmers on his team had started a tradition that he'd, he'd uh, fostered, you could say, um, of like basically uh, swimmers in the locker room doing a what went well exercise, you know, like three good things, or, you know, talk about what, what, what's going well on their team, um, conscious effort to spread positivity on his team. Um, I think, uh, you know, that's, that's really impressive and just something that um, shows how organic some of this can be. It doesn't need, uh, you don't need a master's degree in, in uh, positive psychology to be a master positive psychologist. And I think um, really, you know, if it, 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 that leads into probably the most universally admired trait I would say is if you think about like coaches that are around today and Eddie's still going to be around because he's going to be a coach emeritus. So, um, you know, I would say, um, as much as I hate to admit it, um, uh, Mark Schubert, very influential coach in the U S probably, um, for people that, uh, are like we are here at Wahoo's a high volume program. John Urbanchek, probably uh, the most influential coach in terms of practice structure. Um, Dave Salo is another person who is incredibly influential in terms of practice structure. I would say um, if you look at the influence of Eddie Reese, more than anything, uh, it was like how m much people wanted to they wanted their swimmers to talk uh, about them the way that Eddie's did. I mean, like, I, I know, like, I, I'm crazy jealous when I just, like, read um, even people he didn't coach, you know, like, <laughs> at Texas, just talk about, um, talk about him. I'm like, you know, that is, that is, that is the dream of coaching. That's, that's, that is, in a profession where nobody is going to become the richest person in the world, but the, the, the big prize is the meaning you derive from your work, from, from, you know, the fact that you work with people at a really formative time of their life and you have a huge impact on them. Um, the stuff uh, that you read Texas alumni say about him, that, that's the stuff of a coach's dreams. Um, and it's a testament to, you know, how hard he has worked um, on his relationships with the people that he coaches and um, has really used that to uh, augment his coaching skill to a, to a huge degree. Um, you know, and, and he's universally respected and that's worth saying because I have a hard time thinking of 
too many other coaches on the high eye end that are universally respected, especially in the swim coaching world. I, you know, it's the world I know, but when I compare it to uh, stuff outside of it, we we're gossips, swim coaches. You know, um, I, I I would challenge you to find, you know, one uh, subgroup of people that are more gossipy than, you know, uh, swim coaches named Mike and Chris and, you know, whatever other, um, I, I have a podcast I'm going to do sometime that's like, you know, like 50% of swim coach names are like Mike and Chris and Ryan and, you know, there's a, there's a couple others out there where you can really like sort of get uh, a huge amount of swim coaches under a few names but you know those guys um everybody loves as far as i i've experienced everybody loves to get to that meet and sidle up to you know that person coaching the other team and just just spread that hot hot gossip you know just go for it and i know because i'm like the most gossipy person out there it's why i have a podcast so that i can um actually have a you know active forum where i can uh, spread gossip and acquire gossip and talk to people. Um, you know, uh, I, I definitely should not be saying this, but like I get the best stuff in the five minutes before I record and five minutes after, you know, the part where people go like, Hey, I, I don't want to say this on the podcast, but do, 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 do. that's what like that feeds, um, <laughs> that feeds the, uh, the, the chasm inside of me, you know, that just yearns for more and more gossip. But I mean, back to Eddie Reese, like, so with that much gossiping going around, you would think that there'd be a few people who'd be like, yeah, you know, Eddie Reese, like, he's kind of overrated, like, he's not that good. Nobody says that. Nobody says that. Nobody, um, nobody, like, whispers sort of behind his back, like, well, I mean, you know, he's coaching at Texas, so. You know, it just, everybody thinks he's incredible. Everybody admires the success. They admire the way. Um, Summers uh, talked about him and he it, it I said I would revisit this again it's just let's let's talk about the longevity of his career because I think that um, he made it look so easy that one would think that it's not very hard to coach into your late 70s I'm 37 years old um, my dad just turned 74 a month ago and like my dad he's in great shape <laughs> he's um, you know he exercises frequently he walks to work every day um, like he is a a physically fit 74 year old man and I have noticed in the last 10 years that he's slowed down consider considerably. And like, if you think about the physical demands of coaching, it's not like, it's not like you're just sitting in a chair <laughs> and dispensing wisdom. Okay, coaching is physically demanding in a way, like my dad's a, a psychiatrist and he actually does get to sit in a chair and dispense wisdom quite a bit, right? Um, so, the fact that he has remained dominant into his late 70s in a uh, profession that is physically demanding says to me that probably his last innovation, and I would love to hear about this. Um, maybe, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll see if I can get him to come on the podcast and talk about it. Um, but I would love to hear, because it's clear to me that somewhere in the last 10 or 15 years that he basically innovated like he he changed stuff in his coaching to allow uh, him and his team to be still be really really successful um, even as he couldn't like he couldn't necessarily be a hundred percent the physical presence the other thing is he is a specimen of a 79 year old uh, person so that that part is hard uh, to compare and like if you listen to him for instance again listen to him on the poolside podcast um, it's almost um, insulting to say like oh he sounds so sharp I, it, 
you cannot tell like listen to it and then listen to him you know if you can find find the oldest youtube video you possibly can of eddie reese talking about swimming and i challenge you to hear a difference um in terms of the clarity and directness and organization of everything that he's saying um so it's really really impressive and it's like you know, it's like an athlete that's that's you know, in, like a swimmer in the sport that's dominant into their late thirties. Um, it's something that uh, is almost unprecedented. Um, and I think the last point to make here is, as I said, he's not dying. He's going to be a coach emeritus, and he's going to continue to be a secret weapon for Texas. Um, you know, I think already course we're getting into the speculation who's next who's next who's next i don't want to get into that here because honestly i have no idea that the the the, the list of people that um could potentially uh take over if, if they were to go outside and and it is kind of a dark horse that maybe they're just going to promote uh, Wyatt Collins. I know a lot of people would be shocked by that. Oh man, I said I wasn't going to get into it here, but you know, otherwise it's basically unlimited. It's it's literally any coach in the world um, you could tell me was interested in in coaching Texas, and I would believe you. So um, you could basically uh, we could talk forever about who that might be because, and, and that's just the legacy of of the the sort of quality of, of program he's created there. I think. Um, but I think also, you know, it, it, there, the, you could take the angle that like, oh, it's going to be uncomfortable for whoever takes over because Eddie's still going to be hanging around. Um, Eddie's still going to be hanging around and that will be your biggest, like you'll have the most overqualified volunteer coach in the history of swimming. And if anybody can like... If anybody coaching wise can go from being the head coach to just being purely like and and have that legend status and go to be just a purely helpful assistant coach as somebody else takes over, it's Eddie. He can do it. Um, he, uh, I, I I do think, um, will be able to hang back enough and. Uh, really just be purely helpful to whoever it is that, that takes over that place. So um, happy retirement, semi-retirement uh, transition here in a few months uh, to Eddie. And uh, just wanted to, you know, just to talk about some of the uh, main points about um, a pretty incredible coaching career up to this point. And um, coming later today, I'll, I'll have a podcast with uh, Cena Bro. I think you should listen to that swimmer from Denmark who's uh, made an Olympic qualifying standard. I'm just going to sort of go through what it's been like. Uh, she qualified for an Olympics a, uh, a year ago. She was on her way to go to Tokyo, and she's had to, you know, in this period of COVID, basically uh, do a redo on that. So I'm really curious to hear about it. Um, I coached her for a couple of years when she was uh, when she was a teenager, so um, we have that familiarity as well. Maybe I'll. Uh, torture her with a few questions. So look for that later. Um, but for now, uh, I hope you enjoyed this and see you soon.